because so many love him. Here's a picture of our great president receiving Holy Communion at a Catholic church when he visited Africa. There's a Catholic African priest giving Bill Clinton Holy Communion. But, I, but he's, a, he's a Baptist. Well, maybe I should ask this question. Is the Pope Catholic? And this question, is Bill Clinton Baptist? <laughs> well, <laughs> that might be a good question to ask. Here's an interesting story. It says, this from the Lutheran publication, February 1996. Los Angeles hosts historic baptism. They all got together. A Catholic Cardinal, a Lutheran, an Episcopalian. They all got together and held a baptism. Oh, I pity the person being baptized. Here's Moody Magazine. Joseph Stoll is the president of that. Here's the copy of the article that I got. They're calling for unity. Unity with the Catholic Church. This is Moody. And by the way, Joseph Stoll, the head of uh, Moody uh, Bible College. Joseph Stoll, uh, the publisher of Moody Magazine, the premier, that along with Christianity Today Magazine, premier uh, evangelical magazine, recently met with the Francis George, the uh, Cardinal now of Chicago, and they agreed to work together to even later on have a common faith service. This Pope, Pope John Paul II, uh, has visited such places, as you see from this picture, the Pope has visited the Great Roman Synagogue, yes, the very synagogue of Satan in Rome, Italy, where he met with the chief rabbi, and there they they met on chairs that, that were exactly alike, and the Pope assured the assemblage of Jews that were there at that uh, great Roman synagogue, and this happened, by the way, in 1986. He assured them that they had their own faith, and as long as they worshiped according to the Old Testament, they need not have Jesus in this lifetime. Uh, of course, the question is, is that what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. To those Jews who rejected him, who even called him builds above the devil, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Yes, Jesus is Lord, the Bible tells us. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, the Bible says. But the Pope says you don't have to bow your knee to Jesus. You can bow to any one of a million false gods. The Pope has also met with the Jewish ADL, these haters of Christianity. In my newsletter, I exposed, here's the Pope, in fact, meeting with an ADL delegation and being given a gift. Of course, not every Jew believes in the Pope. Interestingly enough, Christian Jews are very concerned about this. Moshe Rosen, the former head of the Jews for Jesus, a group that I greatly support and endorse, wrote this article in Christianity Today, Love Israel, but evangelize the Jewish people. The Pope, however, says that we should not evangelize the Jewish people. Where does the Pope get all this? Where does he get his new teachings? It came first out of Vatican II, the Second Vatican Council that met in 1962, that burst upon the scene. And first with Pope Paul VI and then with Pope John XXIII, and now this Pope has fully endorsed the Second uh, Vatican Council. It's interesting that Pope Paul VI himself, and I want to quote him from Peter Lovest Thou Me, looking at what had happened, the wreckage that occurred because of this council where all of the cardinals met from the face of the earth and came to Rome and they plotted out a new vision of the Catholic Church and it became what you're seeing now. <laughs> Is the Catholic Church even Catholic today? The question should be asked. Pope Paul VI had something very interesting to say. I want to quote him in a speech he gave December 7, 1968 to Lombard Seminary in Rome. Pope Paul the, the VI, all right? Pope Paul VI in 19, uh, let's see what year was that, 1968, said this. The church, the Catholic church, finds herself in an hour of anxiety, even auto-destruction. He said, one must notice above all the sorrowful aspect. It is as if the church was destroying herself. And then he said, quote, the smoke of Satan has entered the temple of God. Yes, this pope, 
The one before Pope John Paul II, actually two ago, there's one pope in between them who only lasted for 33 days. They found him dead in the Vatican. But Pope Paul VI, who brought in all of these changes which Pope John Paul II has endorsed and even broadened and extended, this pope said that the very smoke of Satan has entered the temple of God. He means, of course, according to him, St. Peter's Cathedral and the Vatican and the Catholic Church. He said, quote, an adverse power has intervened. The devil, that mysterious spirit. He saw what he thought was good in the Second Vatican Council, the changes in the Mass and so forth. But according to even Pope Paul VI, before he died, he admitted, this was right before the men died, that the smoke of Satan had entered the very sanctuary. Now, I want to tell you something, my friends. I'm not so sure that these things are all new. I'm not so sure that this is not just a revival of ancient Babylon. In fact, when you look at the Pope's worship, yes, worship, totus tuus Maria is his logo, uh, 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 slogan. He totally worships Mary as the mother of God. Here's a picture of him worshiping before an idol of Mary. But look at this newspaper issue. Did you know that the worship of the old ancient goddess is back and that witchcraft practitioners and pagans throughout the world are now worshiping the goddess? And they're saying, friends, they're saying that the Pope's worship of Mary is no different than their worship of the ancient goddess, even of Babylon. That's back today. You know, I have a book, the classic book by Bishop Alexander Hislop. It's over 100 years old. I want to show you this drawing. Here is a statue of Mary and the child. And Mary and the child. Oh, wait. Is it? I just made a mistake, friends. You see, this actually was a carving from Babylon of the mother and child. And this on your right is a carving from India of the Hindu goddess and the child. Is that where the Catholics got their statuettes, their idols? Is this where their worship of Mary came from, from Babylon, from ancient uh, India? You know, this Pope has even changed things in terms of the Masonic Lodge. I have here in my hands, you'll see the House of the Temple embossed in gold on this book. Look at the spine of this book and you'll see what it is. It is the classic dogma book, the classic book of doctrines for Scottish Rite Freemasons, the largest, largest Freemasonic group in the world, the largest group of Masons in this earth. Morals and Dogma, written by their great grand sovereign commander, Albert Pike. It's their ancient and accepted right. It's what they worship. And you know, this comes right out of ancient Babylon too. It's amazing that all the popes throughout history have condemned and even excommunicated any priest, any cardinal, any bishop, any member of the Catholic Church that would dare to assist or to join the Masonic Lodge. But this Pope, and I have the proof here in front of me in this document, this Pope, Pope John Paul II, in a new canon, number 1374, deleted the name Mason from this prohibition. Masons are no longer automatically excommunicated. And it's because Masonry is Mystery Babylon and a false Judaism to boot. And the Pope is going right along in that. Where did this come from? It came, my friends, from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I have a copy of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I wish I had time to read it to you because I even have the page here, but I've run out of time. You have to understand, the Pope says that every human being on the face of the earth has Jesus whether they know it or not. The Pope says, while it is true that outside the Catholic Church there is no salvation, the good news is, according to this new catechism, that every human being is a Catholic, whether they know it or not, imperfectly or perfectly. And he specifically mentions that the Muslims worship the same God, the Jews worship the same God, and on and on and on. Is the Pope Catholic? Not according to the new catechism. But maybe what he really is, is Babylonian. Maybe the Catholic Church, according to this book, in fact, the two Babylons, we offer this for your love gift of $15 in the ministry, Maybe there was the first Babylon and then the Catholic Church. Could that be true? I believe when you look at morals and dogma, 
the, the doctrinal book of the Masons worldwide, the Scottish Rite, 